What is good y'all? Welcome back to another video on this channel. You guys are tuned in with your boy Nihilus, man. Look, today we have another interesting video, okay? So I came across this video titled uh, Prostitute Amber. Um, literally titled Prostitute Amber. So I'm not too sure what to expect, honestly. But it looked like it was a story time situation where she kind of shares her experience, I'm assuming, as a prostitute, her life, whatever the case is. So I watched the first couple seconds of it. Um, it seems like it's going to be a very interesting interview, so I figured why not come watch with you guys. So that's exactly what we're going to get into today, into today, man. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like down below, but no need to really talk too much, man. We're about to hop right into it, and uh, let's, see what's, let's, see what's, let's see what's up with Amber, bro. That stutter was crazy. All right, oh, Amber. Hi. Amber, uh, where are you Hi, from? Hi, Amber. I'm from Sacramento, California. Sacramento. Mm -hmm. In, uh, Sacramento. Tell me about your family. You had both your parents growing up? No, I grew up with my grandparents. I was raised by my grandmother, my auntie, and my uncle. Where was, my where, where, where was mom and dad? My mom, she grew up on the streets. She got into drugs at like the age of nine. Damn. Nine. Wow. That's the first time she, yeah. And she hasn't been right since, and I'm surprised she had kids, but she had us, and my grandma raised us, and my mom, she's been you know, on the streets. Still on the streets Damn, to this man. day. You gotta be grateful for your parents, your bro. I really don't know too much of my dad. I mean, I know of his family, but him himself, I don't know too much. I just know he was a drug addict like my mom. Oh, really? Grew up on the streets. Yeah. So you, uh, Damn. So you left home, at, you left your, it was your grandparents you were staying with? And you left them at what, at what point? It was like 13. When I start running in and out of homes. Damn. I started living with my grandma when I was like four, maybe. I think that's what my sister told me. And you started at what age, working the streets? 13. 13. Damn. So how much, what kind of money will you make in a night doing this, or in a day? A whole day and night. At least I think I got Roddy Rich playing in the background. Wow. 12, 1300 in one night as a 13 year old, bro. That's, that's, that's... that's just walking. Yeah. But I mean, I don't enjoy it, but I just, you know, fell into it. Yeah, you yeah. Was 13, walking through the mall, being fast, met a guy. He took my virginity and told me, look, you're going to get on this corner and you're going to bust this date. And you're going to tell him this. And I don't know. I just. I didn't like the fact that I, what I had to do for it, but I don't know, as I grew older and prone to like every day waking up, I have to do this, I have to make this money, I have to get this guy, it's just, it just got stuck into my program, like, I have to do it. <laughs> so to. was he functioning as a pimp for you? Yeah. And did you, Basically. What, what, how much of the money did you give him? All of it. All of it. As a pimp, you can't get half. You give them all. Yeah. So I didn't like that either, cause it's like this is my body. I'm doing this, you know. So I don't confuse why, why. Why are you why doing? Why do this? I gotta? You know, I don't know. Like why are you but doing? I was young and I was being fast and I didn't know what I was getting in myself into. And then when I got into it, then I just got stuck. And Have you been arrested for this? Plenty of time. One time. Plenty of time. I'm sorry. Millions of times. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, bro. Uh, I actually just got out of jail from out here on Figueroa, undercovers. I'm fighting a prostitution case with them. They got me on probation. It's just ridiculous. Damn, man. Do you have children of your own? I do. I have a six-year-old. Six-year-old? And who's raising him? Or her? It's a her. Her, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I don't know how you assume that. My grandma is raising her. Um, I kind of lost her, but I'm trying to get her back, and it's kind of hard talking about that. Like, okay. I don't want to start crying. That's right. But, you know, she's, she's everything to me, so I'm trying my best. I wonder how old back, she is. I know, like, me being in this life, it's just not going to be as easy as a person working a job and, you know, doing what they have to do to get their kid, you know. Me, I'm just working on the streets, praying that it's, she's going to come to me. That's not going to work like that. That's messed up, man. I had a choice to go homeless or to provide for my family. And I chose to provide for my family. And sometimes you gotta make sacrifices in this world. 
as human beings, we gotta sacrifice ourselves or something so we can survive. Hey, man. So have you had some bad experiences with guys you picked up? Um, I'm not gonna lie, and it's crazy you asked me. Um, two nights ago, I, li I was standing on 80th and Figueroa and I got in a car with a guy, a Mexican, he was cool, he didn't do nothing to me. We parked, some, some random kid from out here got in his car and took my money. He, he forced me to do stuff that I didn't want to do. Man, he started calling me dirty, like I was a dirty prostitute. He started trying to make me feel bad and lower of a woman than I, what I was. And it, it, it's already bad enough that being a, in this life and doing what I'm doing, you don't feel as much of a, of a woman. You gotta make yourself, you gotta put it in your head like I'm, a, I'm still beautiful, I'm still a woman. You gotta tell yourself, cause every yeah, day man. like you're going to meet different men, you're having sex with dirty men, like you know, you feel less. You're, you're already giving yourself up. So it's like when he came in there and did that and just like took my whole dignity from me and I was just, and it literally happened two nights ago. So I don't know why I'm still back out here and yet I'm still back out here. Do you, do you get depressed sometimes with this life? I do, a lot. I find myself, sitting in my hotel rooms crying to myself. Can you imagine? With my baby. Because I, I call her and she's like, Mommy, just come home. And I can't. I'm stuck, you know? And, like, you know, it's not like I want to. It's like, literally, I'm, like, controlled, you know? So I'm, like, in this, like, I don't know. I feel like it's the game controlling me to keep doing it. I don't feel like it's me or nobody else but the game and the money. You know, I want to get out, but I'm 21. I feel like it's too late. 21? What you mean it's too late? You're still young. Did you finish baby. high school? No. no. I, I was pregnant. But she did 14, start at 13. So, and I was hoeing at 13. So, I was like ditching school just to go home. I would lie to my grandparents. Okay, I'm going to school. No, I'm I'm find myself on a track somewhere, making some money. Do yeah. you know who the father of your child is? The father of my child, he's not around, but yeah, I do know do. he is. He kind of disappeared because as I grew up and I realized in this game, I don't need a pimp. You know, you, as in, you don't need a pimp. They will lie to you and say, but that's because they want your money to take them to their family. You know, and I grew up realizing that. And now my baby daddy was like, okay, well, you don't want to pay me. You want to act funny and keep your own money, so bye. You know, but I have a daughter now, so I don't feel like. So you know, her daddy is like, the pimp. One of those females, I'm not gonna pay nobody no more. I've been controlled. I've been under guys, you know? Like, I just, I can't. So my baby daddy was just like, fuck you, fuck the baby. Okay, so fuck you too, bye, you know? Do you, uh, are you you're currently working without a pimp? Right now, honestly, I have a boyfriend. And I give him half my cut. But he's not like a pimp. So he doesn't take my full cut. He don't control me when I go out there. He don't, you know. I do have some. I do have a boyfriend. I'm not gonna lie. I have a boyfriend, but I don't have a pen. Oh, he's playing you a boyfriend, but not when a you, pen. When you were a young girl, did you have like dreams of a different life than than this? I always dreamed of being like a real estate agent, you know, or a flight attendant somewhere higher class, like cute, professional. You know, I'm a white girl, like. I grew up a born here. I should oh, I sh feel like I should have been behind the desk. That's how I feel in life. I should be on the plane being a flight attendant. I should be flipping houses, you know. I have a, a good mouthpiece, you know. I could be a lawyer. Like, I really wanted to be a real estate, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's sad how many young women end up working the streets. I mean, like, if you see it where you're at, there's, they're all over. I know a couple of girls out here that are younger than me. I'm talking like 16. Damn, 15, bro. 17. And I preach them, like, get out. It's not, it's not. 15, girls, 16, it's not made 17. For she started at 13. Yeah. That's crazy. This game is not made for everybody. You got to be a strong woman to survive this because I've been pistol with, I've been shot at, I've been raped, I've been kidnapped through this whole life the game how, how do you think this life has, has changed you you've been doing it for quite a while i think honestly as a person it made me strong because if i never experienced the things that i experienced going through this life i probably wouldn't be as strong as i am today
think it made me a strong woman because I could still wake up and tell myself, okay, you got this. You're still a good mother. You're still a beautiful woman. You got this. You it's know? good that she's looking at it what, in what a positive way. What do you think about way. your upbringing, your childhood? What do, you, what do you think if something was different might have led you down a, a very different path than this? Maybe a mom and a dad that wasn't on drugs, that had two normal jobs, you know, was willing to raise kids on a normal household. That just goes to show like, you know, how important drugs. having a family and supportive household really is, it's man. It's a big one. Stirring me to the right path. Just having parents. There have been times where I had people to go think, on people to think, get rent money. My mom blew it all on drugs. And I have two sisters. Somebody has to feed them. I had to be the one. Somebody had to be. So you're, you're people take their parents for granted, sisters. man. I, well. You have to appreciate your parents. And where, where are your sisters today? They're all in Sacramento. They got jobs now. They're doing their thing. They're so doing different, good. A little different path than you. <laughs> Way better path than me. Yeah. Way better. But that's what I raised them to do. You know, I didn't want them to have to suffer like me. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not okay to be out here. It's not. Yeah. It's scary. Any woman, any working female would tell you it's scary to be outside. Jumping in different cars, not knowing when you're coming home, you know? Yeah. It's scary. And they're using drugs at all? I do ecstasy. I take ecstasy every day or every other day to keep going because I work all day and I work all night. So I need something to keep me up, active. Otherwise, I'd just be like, I can't work, I'm tired. And then I, I don't have no money. I got to pay for hotel rooms every day. I don't have my own place. So, so you'll travel around from city to city? Yeah, what, all what? cities. All through California. Damn, man. From Sacramento, all the way from here to L.A., to Bakersfield, to Oxford, everywhere. <laughs> Pretty much. That's crazy, bro. All right. Well, Amber, thank you so much for talking to me. No problem. And good luck with uh, with your future. I hope you hope you get to see your get back together with your kid. Yeah, thank you. I really do too. That's like the biggest goal in life. I appreciate it. Yeah, she needs you. All right, thank you. You're welcome. That's OD, man. Look. Stuff like this just, just just makes me thankful, number one, for my family, number one, for everything that I have. It's just it's just the small thing that you have to be appreciative of, for real, for real, man. But um, if you guys did make it up to this video, I mean, to, to this point in the video, then leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and stay tuned to Nature's TV for more lit content, man. I'm going to catch you on the next one, bro. Peace.